Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another BIM video. In this video I will be explaining the BIM implementation process. Specifically, I will be presenting to you a framework for BIM adoption in the architecture, engineering and construction industry. Let's get started. So a number of uh, learning outcomes for you guys. So what we will be covering in this video, first the BIM implementation framework, technology considerations that organizations should uh, account for, some legal considerations, and then finally, the transfer of the model between various platforms. This framework that you see in front of you, I promise you, it's very simple. It involves four key components, as you can see. Now, commonly, this framework is referred to as the topics framework, and it's used for this BIM implementation process at organizations. Let's go through each aspect of the framework together. The T stands for technology. The O is for organization. The P is for process. And finally, the IC is for in context. We will explore what each of these mean next. Starting off with technology. So the technology component, that's where a company that wants to implement BIM, they would need to consider what technology they need to install, uh, what, uh, what technology they need to train their staff on, uh, maintain and invest in. And that's all this sort of technology that they need in order to implement BIM in their projects. The type of technology that are involved uh, through the use of BIM will of course depend on several factors. So number one, what are the applications that the company intends to implement BIM for? So for instance, is the company only interested in estimation? Is the company only interested in using BIM for visualization? Or does it need it also for environmental analysis? And number two is the level of development, LOD, that the organization wants to adopt. If you are not sure what LOD is, please go back to one of my previous videos where I described the concept of LOD. And number three is what are the tools that it needs to implement? Uh, so for example, if an organization wants to use virtual reality, VR, then it must buy goggles. And these have to be linked to a powerful computer machine for smooth running. So these are you know, some of the technology aspects that they have to consider. Next, we'll have a look at the organization component of the framework. This is where the entity considering to implement BIM needs to decide on the procurement methods for its projects. Are the projects going to be delivered based on a traditional design bid built method? Uh, and then maybe have BIM used for client presentations and visualization purposes? Or is the entity going to deliver projects using the integrated project delivery method and have BIM be the major delivery platform throughout the project? Another aspect of organization, uh, the organization component in the topics framework is concerned with decisions that relate to um, suppliers. So for instance, who supplies the materials for that entity? And these suppliers, do they already implement BIM? If they do implement BIM, do they have uh, BIM libraries and families that they can share with that entity so that the entity can integrate uh, the library with its BIM system? Uh, what about delivery schedules? Can it be integrated within the entity's BIM system to allow for a seamless operation during the construction part of the project? So it's important to uh, consider such aspects. Contracts is another important thing as well that's part of the organization component of the topics framework. So how are contracts organized? And in terms of BIM delivery, uh, what are some of the contracts that the ent entity has to use uh, when it's delivering projects via BIM? Uh, that's all part of the organization component of the framework. Now we also have the process part of the topics framework. And that is where the BIM workflow of the entity is decided. So some of the questions that the company, or the entity that it would need to consider would include who will be responsible for generating the 3D model? 
who is the BIM manager? Who reports to the BIM manager? The people that are trained to use BIM, what exactly is their, um, what's the purpose of, of the work? What are they do, uh, what sorts of uh, models do they produce? And this is all part of uh, deciding the workflow to adopt when a company wants to implement BIM. Finally, we have the in context part of the framework, and that is where legal requirements are looked at. So when I say legal requirements, I mean number one, issues that deal with copyright. So you have copyright of the model. Uh, number two, the contract law that's associated with BIM. Uh, number three, privacy uh, when it comes to the model. Uh, number four, the concept of privity of contracts. So when you have a BIM model, who are the parties that are involved? And then as part of this context, uh, part of the, of the framework, there's also the capability of the existing team that you have in your company. So for instance, who is already trained on how to use BIM? What about training on specific BIM platforms? Are you going to be using Revit as a BIM platform? Are you going to be using Bentley or maybe Archicad? So once all of these components of the framework are figured out, the company can then start the BIM implementation process. I want to explore the organization component of the topics framework a bit further. Some of the questions that need to be answered when it comes to the organization component of the topics framework include, how would the entity designed to implement BIM organize, say, the team that will be using BIM? Now here you can think of any plans that the entity has in terms of you know, the participants that will be trained in order to use uh, BIM. Uh, another consideration over here is that who will be the BIM manager and who will be drafting using BIM? And then who are the people that will be reporting to the BIM manager? And who will be responsible after that for compliance checks of the BIM model? Remember that each project has a set of standards that you need to comply with as determined by the BIM management plan. So who looks at this BIM management plan and ensures that you comply with it? Then you will have to decide on whether you're going to be using IPD as a delivery method for your project. Are you willing to have consultants and other stakeholders involved in every aspect of the project from the start? A lot of companies are actually very protective of their workflow. So they have to adopt different uh, styles of thinking to remove such protections um, and they have to trust this IPD delivery method should they wish to adopt BIM in the most uh, optimum way. Another concept that you will hear about regularly in industry when it comes to BIM is the BIM maturity level. This is a measure that's used to assess how developed BIM implementation is in a company or an organization. Now there are four levels on this scale, as you can see on the graph in front of you. Level zero is the traditional CAD delivery, where no BIM is used. Uh, projects at this level, you can think of them as uh, being delivered in, in the traditional way. So you have drawings that are generated using CAD, uh, and then these are printed on paper, and then the paper would be used on site. Updates that take place are usually very slow, given that the party concerned needs to do the update in all the relevant drawings, and then regenerate a set of uh, plans, new plans, to distribute to others that are involved in the project. Let's say, for instance, um, that you, know, you have your, the wiring for your electrical lighting in, in a building. These, uh, the wiring had to change because the electrical lighting connections changed. This has to go through the electrical engineer. The electrical engineer has to update the plans and then the updates are passed on to the construction team, uh, mostly through email, and then the plans get printed and used on site. So it's a very long process. In level one, this is one step higher than the previous level. This is where there is some sort of uh, BIM implementation taking place, so it's not fully adopted, but mostly it's where BIM is utilized for visualization purposes. At this level, you do get some file-based collaboration that takes place between the parties involved in the project. In level two, 
um, of the BIM maturity scale, we are now talking about developing a BIM library that contains common BIM objects that are used across the various projects by the organisation. The organisation is then able to use these objects on various other projects. So for example, if you have a family of windows or doors that are commonly installed in commercial buildings that you work uh, on, you can develop a library of these windows and doors and you can reuse them every single time you have a similar project. Finally, in level three, and that's the highest level in the BIM maturity scale, this is an integrated web services BIM hub. So the models are produced here um, based on real-time updates where you track the exact changes that happen on site via an automated approach, maybe through uh, the internet. Uh, you have full operability between all BIM platforms at this level. And this basically means that, for instance, if you have parties that are using uh, different BIM file formats because of their uh, different software that they're using, so Revit, Bentley, Archicad, these can all be integrated together to make sure that there's a, a smooth workflow between the parties. I also want to look at the legal considerations involved in the topics framework. Uh, now, the, to use BIM on projects, that will require the entity uh, wishing to implement BIM to adopt a different legal approach than what traditionally would be implemented using your usual non-BIM delivery methods. For instance, there are various questions about model ownership that need to be answered. If someone designs the architecture model in BIM, do they automatically become the owner of the model? What about the person that embeds information into the model? That would enable, say, a realistic cost estimation to be derived. Can't they be the actual owners? The answer is not always straightforward, and your contracts used for the BIM projects, they need to reflect these legal considerations. Uh, and you can do that through specifically designing uh, legal clauses in your contract. Now, in addition, who would be responsible for handling the model standards, the archives and the BIM execution plan? These are all questions that legally need to be answered in any BIM project. The entities that are liable will need to be clear in terms of the contracts that they use. These clauses have to be clearly set out to ensure that they are BIM related uh, clauses. In most cases, what happens is that all of this can be incorporated in a BIM protocol exhibit and this forms part of the contractual agreement between the parties. We also need to realize that given BIM is relatively new uh, in the Australian construction industry, there aren't heaps of law cases around it. So it's difficult to judge what is the precedence in the courts when it comes to BIM related case law. Some of you might ask, how do you make sure that everyone on every single project will be using the same BIM platform? So what happens if you get a situation where one party uses Revit and another uses Bentley or Archicad, say? To answer this, I want to draw your attention to an important initiative that is led by Building Smart, which aims to improve the exchange of information between BIM platforms used in the architecture, engineering, and construction industries. Now, this initiative is referred to as the Industry Foundation Classes, or IFC for shorthand. Uh, this common language is supported by all BIM platforms currently available in the market as it provides a universal supported standard for storing and sharing of BIM related information. Basically, you can design your architecture model using Bentley, save it as an IFC file and then transfer that to someone else who uses Revit and they can manage uh, the construction works using that uh, file and then Revit will be able to communicate with this IFC file format. In the same way, uh, you can also uh, have it the other way around so you can start the design in Revit and then transform the design into an IFC format and then continue working on it using Bentley. Of course, apart from IFC, there are other industry standards that support storing and sharing inf of information across uh, the BIM platform. So for instance, you have Kobe as a format that's used for facility management purposes while GBXML is used for environmental analysis that are run in BIM. So I do hope that this uh, video helped explain some of the concepts uh, regarding uh, BIM and its implementation in the industry. 
If you do like the video, please make sure that you hit the like button. Do check out my other BIM videos. See you all soon.